if you're confused on why we have the values decreasing for a squared value and values increasing for a root value is because the root and the square applied here are over this y coordinates this is what i am talking about the membership values are present here so if you apply a square here obviously the values would decrease along this path the value would values would increase along this path so please do not get confused this square and this root they are present over a white co y coordinate and not x coordinate and that is the reason you are seeing things in an opposite manner this is just for clarification we have few more operations in the case of fuzzy sets uh, there is equality equality is when you have all the elements and the membership functions function values are the same ones not equal is obviously the other way containment is where you're looking for a subset or equal to so that is when you have all the membership functions function values of one set being less than or equal to the membership values of the other one in a proper subset you have the previous case you have containment as well as you're supposed to be making sure that both the sets are not the same ones and in the case of product you just multiply the elements so it's pretty straightforward so as in multiply the elements you only multiply their membership values you don't multiply the elements directly i'll show you a small example to help you understand that so let us look at another small example here there is a universal set which has four elements one two three four there is a set called a which has these elements b which has these elements and then if i were looking for a product of these two fuzzy sets a and b what i'm supposed to be doing is i need to look at all the elements which are in common so i have one and one here i have four and four here i'm supposed to only multiply these membership values so 0 0.3 into 0 0.7 is going to give me 0 0.21 similarly with 4 i have 0 0.5 and 0 0.8 i multiply both of them i'll be getting 0 0.4 now why do i only look at the common values because if you multiply the membership value for 3 here you do not you don't have a membership value for 3 in the case of b so it is going to be 0 so 0 into 0 0.2 will give you 0 and then you do not need to represent that in the case of your fuzzy sets so you do not need to represent any elements whose membership values are 0 so that is the reason i ask you only to look at the elements which are in common so let us look at the next property we have power which is just an elongation of whatever you have in your product you just keep multiplying over and over and over again and then you have something called as bold union so bold union is defined as something like this you take a minimum of one or the membership value of x plus the membership value of uh, the membership value of a plus the membership value of b once again to help you understand this let us look at a small example so let us try making a bold union of a and b here so you are first supposed to add the elements which are present in both these sets so for one if you add up these you would be getting 0 0.3 and 0 0.7 uh, the sum of it is one so minimum of one comma one is going to be one so it's going to stay next one you have two here in the case of b and in the case of a you do not have a 2 so it's 0 0.4 plus 0 so 0 0.4 and 1 the minimum would be 0 0.4 so you'd be having 2 with a 0 0.4 similarly with 3 you have a 0 0.2 here you have a 0 here you add both of them you'll be getting 0 0.2 with 4 you have 0 0.5 plus 0 0.8 which gives you 1.3 and out of 1 and 1.3 you have a minimum of 1 so you'll be having 4, 4, 1. So that is your bold union. And with bold intersection, you do quite the opposite. You take a maximum of 0 or membership value of A plus membership value of B minus 1. So once again, look at the example here. So let us look at all these numbers. So 0 0.3 plus 0 0.7 is 1 minus 1 would give me 0 so maximum of 0 and 0 is 0 so i'd be having 1 comma 0 since it's 1 comma 0 
I do not need to represent that here so I have omitted it next with 2 I have 0 0.4 plus 0 here it is 0 0.4 minus 1 which gives me 2 comma minus 0 0.6 so that is once again I mean 0 is once again the maximum here so it's it would be 2 comma 0 so I don't need to include that here so in the case of 3 it's the same thing so 0 0.2 minus 1 would give me minus 0 0.8 so maximum of 0 and this minus 0 0.8 is 0 so once again the, uh, the value would be 3 comma 0 so I need, I need not include that here so I will skip this as well with 4 I have 0 0.5 plus 0 0.8 which gives me 1.3 minus 1 which gives me 0 0.3 so maximum of 0 and 0 0.3 is 0 0.3 so that is the only element which is having a value greater than 0 so that is present here so I have an assignment question for you the second question of this assignment number 3 I want you to solve exercise question number 10.1 here the first question in the exercise it's pretty easy you'll be looking at small additions of uh, sets you'll be looking at finding subtractions of them it shouldn't be very hard so that's your second question now let us look at some basic reshaping functions reshaping operations rather so why do we need this basic reshaping operations um, it's already written here to generate new fuzzy sets so why do we need to generate new fuzzy sets as I already told you if we have a graph like this and then if we know that this graph is representing young now how do we represent a graph which is representing very young very young should obviously be taking a much steeper curve right something like this yes so this will be very young now if I were to include another adjective I'll call it not so young so where will that be so it should be over this right so how do we create such graphs how do we create such new graphs with the existing fuzzy sets is what we are going to look at here so we have two basic reshaping operations one is called as dilation the other one is called as concentration so in the case of dilation what we do is we increase the degree of membership for all the members so if you increase the degree of membership you will be getting pretty much this one this is the one which I am talking about so that is what you will be getting in the case of dilation if you concentrate you decrease the degree of membership for all the values so this one is defining your degree of memberships so this is 0 to 1 and these are all your elements so this is your x values so this one decreases the membership values so if you look at these ones they're decreasing the values maybe i should use another color so this was what we had originally this is my concentrated graph and this is my dilated graph so this can be used to represent not so young this green one can be used to represent very young and this red one can be used to represent young So if you look at this representation, this is a small example. So in order to increase the degree, what you could be doing is raising the values to a power of 0 0.5. So when you do that, the values would automatically keep increasing. And if you square the values, then they would keep decreasing. So this is how the graph would actually look like for whatever membership values we have given. 
So as you can see, young is the graph which is present, the curve which is present at the center, and the dilated curve obviously is bloated up, and the concentrated curve is present inside our original curve. So I have an assignment question for you here. The question will be 10.2 from from your exercise, which is also similar to what you have seen just now. So I want you guys to do that as your third question of assignment number three. So now let us look at a few properties of fuzzy sets. So one of the properties that fuzzy set has is cardinality. So cardinality in general would mean the total number of elements present in a set. So in the case of crisp sets, it's very neatly defined. But what does it mean in the case of fuzzy sets? In the case of fuzzy sets, what cardinality actually means is it's the sum of all the membership values of its elements. So it's not just about the number of elements being present. It's also about how much they are being present in that particular set. So it's basically denoted by sigma of all the membership functions. That is the sum of all membership function values. Next property that we're going to look at is called as a height. So height is basically the highest membership value that we have in our fuzzy set normalization so this is another one that we have here so what normalization does is it divides every membership value by the highest membership value so what does it mean so what does normalization do so let's say you have 0 0.8 as your highest membership value in your fuzzy set and you divide every element by 0 0.8 what happens then i'll give you a few moments to try comprehend that okay so if you divide every element by 0 0.8 you are sure that at least one element will have a height as one so what normalization does is it makes sure that the height of the fuzzy set is always one so that is what normalization does it is denoted by something like this so you have another small assignment question here so if you look at your textbook on page number 351 there is a very very small example it is not even considered as an example uh, you have a set called a you have a set yeah you have a set called a which has a few values in it all you have to do is uh, write down the cardinality values, the height values and the norm normalization form for it. So that will be your fourth question in assignment number three.